getting the women's water polo into the Olympic Games. Tell us a little bit about that and the and the challenges and the struggle to get it to get it in. Well, that was the the women. They they're the ones who really got it in. I mean, they they are the ones. Uh, Liz Weeks, uh, Pat Jones, uh, the Jones girls, uh, Leanne Barnes. They're the ones who really got in the Olympics. They're the ones who are out demonstrating at the airports and the like, and they drove it more than anybody else. Um, the other person who really was in, uh, assisted them with that was John Coates. Uh, John, president of the Australian Olympic Committee uh, and an influential IOC member, John was fantastic in supporting uh, the push to have women in the Olympic Games. And it's a combination of very active uh, women, women athletes and former athletes, and John Case is the reason why uh, we, we were able to get the women in the Olympic Games. Being the judges oath at yeah. the opening ceremony, what, what was that like as an experience for you? Well, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, um, I came out of the blue. Uh, I was run by John Coates a couple of weeks beforehand to say that I was going to do it, and uh, I hadn't even contemplated it. It was just a wonderful experience on the day, and on the day itself, um, I was went out to the stadium early and uh, in a corporate box with all the older athletes who carried in the Olympic flag. Um, and so we spent the whole afternoon there then, and, and the opening ceremony. Marjorie Jackson, uh, Murray Rose, uh, Gillian Bol R Rolton, uh, uh, Bill Roycroft, uh, and that was fantastic. And the actual uh, oath itself, you know, was as you would expect, was quite a memorable occasion. And tell us about the women winning in Sydney 2000. Where were you, and how satisfying was that for the, the entire sport? Well, it was incredible. Um, and I, as I was president then, uh, my wife Jenna and I sat with John Howard and his wife, um, as the prime minister was there, which was fantastic. Um, and um, the whole stadium was filled, uh, 17,000 people. I don't think water polo had ever had so many people at a, a gold medal game. I thought we'd won it um, in the last two or three seconds and that goal was recalled. And then Yvette Higgins uh, scored the winning goal. Uh, and so uh, the Prime Minister was fairly happy uh, and uh, we were fairly happy about it too. It really brought into light um, uh, our sport and it's down to the women. Um, and getting that gold medal. And I think that in the last 20 years, uh, it's been a great help uh, uh, to give us some sort of prominence in, in the sporting world. Having said that, um, our men's team have been the ones who have kept the, the sport going over all these years uh, from the 48 Olympic Games. People like Tom Hode, who played in 1960 and is still involved with the Melville Club, uh, all these years later, 60 years later, uh, the men have kept the sport going. Uh, but the women really gave us, uh, gave us the publicity uh, and, uh, and now, and we've always had good teams, uh, both men and women, and so it's a shame with Tokyo now being postponed because I think both the men and women, uh, the men in particular, uh, are very strong at the moment. One final question, what has the sport given you? Well, it's given me my life. I mean, all my connections, everything. I suppose it applies to most team sports, rugby and the like, but water polo has a longevity. Um, you seem to stay in the sport and play the sport uh, quite late in life. But it's given me everything. It's my connections, um, it's given me um, health, uh, and I just think it's a marvellous sport. I think it's the best, the best sport in the world.